Nick, some philosophers point to a zombie as evidence for the fact that consciousness cannot be explained entirely by the material, natural world. And it goes something like this. We can have an individual that looked like me that had all my behaviors, 100% of my behaviors, not my children, not my wife, not my mother, not my psychiatrist if I had one, could tell that zombie from me. The only difference in that zombie is there's, there's nothing inside. There's no inner experience. Everything is deterministic, determined as if it were uh, our laptop computer writ large and put into uh, our bodily form. Now, that claim states, the outcome of, the outcome of that claim is that consciousness, therefore, is a further fact about the world that cannot be accounted for the material world, at least as we know it today. Yes, but you said philosophers point to the existence of the zombie uh, as if it was an established fact. But they have the idea of this zombie, of yeah. philosophical zombie, but there's no earthly reason to believe that it's actually a logically a possibility. Um, it's yet to be established that they, that 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 kind of creature could even in principle exist. Well, I, I, it's, I, you can I mean, yes, they can imagine it perhaps, but you know, people can imagine the sound of one hand clapping. Um, it's a wonderful exercise to think about that, but it doesn't mean there is a sound of one hand clapping. Yeah, um, fa fa fair enough, yeah. but, but there is progress in computer science such that many in artificial intelligence can be believe that very soon that computers will pass the so-called Turing test oh. where it, they will be indistinguishable, a computer will be indistinguishable from a human being in terms of its response. Now, in some future science, you could put that kind of computer writ very large in a body that looked like ours, and in principle, get to the point where it would be impossible to tell that, in, that, that uh, being uh, even if it's non-biological, from a biological being. Well, if you got that far, you would have created a conscious computer, um, which, of course, is not an Well, wait a minute, you're defining consciousness yeah. by its behavior. How do you know what's inside? Yes, I am defining it in, in terms of its behavior, and that's my point from the beginning, that consciousness changes our lives. It exists in order to change our lives, and the representations we form, which we call conscious representations, are representations by the brain of something going on inside our heads, which we then deliver in terms of the language of consciousness. That, that's a very, that, that is an, a legitimate, but I would, I would suggest independent point. The question is, is a philosophical zombie with super advanced computing a, possi a real possibility? Because if it is, then the experience inside is a further fact about the world to be explained. If you say that if you have all the behaviors associated with um, what we determine to be conscious, then that thing is conscious. That is a rather aggressive claim. It may be true. And well, I, we have to think, look, if we're developing this machine, the designers have got to know what they're doing. How are they going to put into this robot uh, the kinds of experiences, the kinds of things which will make it claim to have conscious experiences yes, and to, yes. and to uh, you know, experience love and emotions and, right. and, and God and have its own soul and so on. Right. Unless they, and if you said it, it wasn't conscious, it would get mad at you and punch yeah. you. In order to do that, I think there's going to have to be some very clever design work to go. To well, or, or, and or, the only design work I can imagine, which would which, which would deliver on that, would be give give this robot some kind of magical theater inside its head, just like not we ourselves. So, not so. It's a question of computing power, and yeah. you you can estimate the kinds of experiences that we have in our lives, uh, and see how many different bits of information you need, and it is certainly within computational. Uh, uh, um, development as mm -hmm. as the power of technology grows exponentially to see that in a in in a fairly short maybe even number of decades. No, it's not. It's not. We're not not even approaching the possibility of doing that, and we're certainly not going to get there until we've understood the nature of consciousness and designed it into the machine. Okay, so you don't. If we don't, the machine won't manifest the behaviors, very behaviors, which you're going to say might make us believe. So, so your, your claim is, and let's, let's be very clear, mm -hmm. that it will be impossible in principle forever to have a, a computer 
uh, represent in full the full behavioral expressions of human beings in all its richness. And to do that without the inner theater of consciousness mm -hmm. is in principle impossible. Yes, I think it would, it would, I mean, it's a bizarre suggestion that we could have something which could mimic every, every dot, yes. dot and tittle of our yes. behavior and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the kinds of representations and experiences which lead to us manifesting that behavior, which didn't in fact, uh, uh, wasn't in fact some kind of carbon copy of the machinery of the human brain. And well, I think machinery of the human brain is one thing, but you're adding and also having the the phenomenological yeah. Ex yeah. phenomenological experience of consciousness. Yes, absolutely. And I think, I mean, Robert, I think it's an interesting possibility. When might we want to actually design consciousness into a, a robot to do most of the things we imagine robots doing? They don't need consciousness. They're, they're going to fulfill the, the, the skilled functions which they're designed for without having to be sure. conscious. But can I tell you, I think it may be, it may, there may come a time at which we really do want to make computers conscious. And I'll tell you what that might be. Not so far in the future, we're going to have to send out robots in our place to explore the universe for us. They're going to have to make journeys which the human body couldn't possibly make. They're going to have to live uh, for generations longer than a human being could live for. We're going to send out machines to do that job for us. Now, when we do that, the danger is going to be, because these are going to be very intelligent machines, they're going to begin to wonder just why they're there, what the meaning of their lives is, um, what their purpose is, living uh, in a, this solitary life, uh, uh, exploring uh, an unknown area, unknown areas of the universe. Maybe at that point, in order to give them a sense of purpose, a sense that life has meaning, we're going to have to design into them a sense of life's magnificence, of the wonders of existence, of the, the, the experiences they're having actually in themselves are giving life a purpose and a meaning. In other words, maybe we're even going to have to give them something like a soul and a belief in God. Now, when we do that, I know how to do that. Nature knows how to do that. It's to make them conscious. I commend your position for being consistent, which many people are not. So the natural conclusion of what you're saying is that it is entirely possible within the scope of this technology to engineer consciousness, the inner phenomenological subjectivity. But Robert, let me say... In principle. Yeah, and why am I so confident? Because it's been done. That's what nature did. Nature began with the building blocks of biological material. Nothing magical about them, you know, nothing paranormal, just you know, chemistry and physics and, uh, and, and a whole lot of ingenious design principles. And on that, it's built you and it's built me. We are robots designed by a, des by a designer, very extraordinary designer, the designer which we call natural selection. And we are living proof that robots can be conscious.